So if I pull back on over then, I went back to one dependent now. So we're still at head of household stand is one dependent. But even though they are a qualifying child to be a dependent, they're not qualified for the child tax credit because they're over the age threshold to be under 17. And therefore we're in the other credit for other dependents. Now this one person still may push us over to, to be able to claim a head of household status possibly, but we're focused here on page number two, where we have a big decrease now. Now we have the other dependent credit, which is only 500 versus the 2000. So if I mirrored that over here in our worksheet, we've got the other credits. So this is, I should have put these up top. This is the other dependent credit, child tax credit. Let's put 500 here. And this should be total other dependent credit. It's going to be pulling back on over to the first page. So now we've got the 500. And if I go back on and take a look at this, at this again, that gets us to the 11, 355, and the bottom line of the 3,645. So there's that one. Okay. Let's go back to the original scenario here, but now let's say that the income is going to is going to go up, right? So we hit the income threshold. So how high does that income have to be for single? I believe 200,000. So let's just test it out. If I get to let's let's say 220,000 and I go back on over here, then we have the child tax credit, but then on page 2, it's been limited. So you have the phase out that's kicking in now. We only got 1,000 instead of the 2,000. Now you probably don't need to memorize the worksheet on, on you know how they got to the calculation of 1,000 versus 2,000. You basically need to understand because the tax software will help you with that. So you can double check it here, but you basically want to be able to say, okay, I, I uh, understand the normal threshold and then what the, what the phase out when it will start uh, to phase out due to the income threshold being over 200,000 in this case. Now, if, if I change the income to just 200,000, you'll note we're still taking, we're still good for the full 2000 amount. So over that amount, it starts to phase out. Now let's go back to, let's go back here and let's put it up to like 200, 250,000. And if I go back on over, you can see then on page number two, it has been removed in essence. But if I change the filing status to married filing joint now, so if I go back on over here and say now they're married and then back on over. So now we have married filing joint and that's going to change our thresholds because now you have two people, you would think it would be doubled. So you're back up to the 2000. So when does it phase out if you're married? it'd have to go all the way up to like 4,000, you would think, right? So if it was, if it was 400, 400,000, not 4,000, 400,000, you're still good. But if you go beyond that 420,000, then you've got the phase out kicking in. So that's the general idea for the, for the upper thresholds, pretty high upper thresholds, although, you know, higher income individuals will hit that. Okay, now let's go to the lower income side of things back to head of household and say, say now we've got our one dependent, but we only earned 20,000. So if we earned 20,000, then after the standard deduction, our taxable income is only $600. And then if I calculate my tax, it's only $61. So we only owe 60, we would only owe $61 in that case. So you would think if it was an income tax, then the only credit you would get is up to $61, even though it would normally be $2,000 because you don't owe any tax in the first place. But, and so you can see it kind of capped it right here in our worksheet. But that's where the additional child tax credit kicks in down here. Now, we also have the, the kind of messing things up with the earned income credit and the child tax credit. Those are the two big refundable component credits that could basically kick in here. So let's jump on over. This one's more complex. So let's look at the schedule 8812. So child tax credit, child tax credit or credit for other dependents enter the amount on line 11 of form 1040. There's your AGI income. And so then we've got 
the the twenty thousand. There's the two thousand. That would be the amount that you would normally get. You would think I'm not going to go through it completely line by line here. Here's the upper income thresholds: two hundred thousand or four hundred thousand single married uh, filing joint. And then we're limited here. Enter the amount from credit limit worksheet. So here's your worksheet: sixty one, right there. And then on page number two. We've got the calculation that gives us the 1,500, which is going to be, uh, I won't go through it line by line here, but the general idea is this, this is the additional child tax credit for all filers. In other words, it's the refundable part of the child tax credit if your income liability goes below zero. And the bottom line is you can see the refundable portion is limited to 1,500. So you can see up here, you, you actually got 61 of a credit plus the 1,500. So if I increased my income like a little bit, let's make it to, to uh, 25,000. So now we actually had a little bit more tax, $500 of tax, and it wiped out the tax at the 563. And now we've got the 1,437 for uh, the additional amount here. And it's a little bit complicated because again, these two have a little bit of interplay, the earned income credit being the other big refundable credit, which we'll focus in on in future presentations. The point I'm trying to make is you would think that these two would add up to that, that limit of 1,500, but it doesn't, right? Because the 1,500 additional child tax credit limit minus this 1,437, you would think that would be this number, right? So we're still getting you know, over the 1,500 additional child tax credit because we're getting this amount that takes the tax down to zero up top, the normal child tax credit, and then the additional child tax credit at the 1,437. Now, of course, if they're, they're not a child at all, but they, but they qualify as an other dependent, then we wouldn't get the child tax credit. So let's go back to the original, the original scenario. So now we've got this individual is going to qualify for an, for an other dependents. So the question is, are they a qualifying child for purposes of being a dependent? If so, then the added level, do they qualify for the bigger credit, the child tax credit? If not, they would be a qualifying child that would give you the other dependent credit. If they're not a qualifying child, are they a qualifying just relative? Which, which then would, of course, the only thing you'd be going for at that point is the $500 credit, uh, the other dependent credit as opposed to the child tax credit.